Good morning. The Arbitral Tribunal will continue today its hearing in PCA case number 2019-28, the dispute concerning the detention of Ukrainian naval vessels and servicemen. Today, Ukraine is due to present its first round of oral submissions. Again, as in the case yesterday, this portion of the hearing is being webcast live on the internet. After the statement made by the agent for Ukraine, the webcast will end. No other parts of today's pre proceedings will be webcast. I give the floor to Ms. Zolotaria Nova to make her statement. Mr. President, members of the Tribunal, I am honored to appear before you as the agent for Ukraine. Ukraine believes in international law. When the rules of international law are broken, we seek justice and accountability by peaceful means. That is why Ukraine came to this Tribunal. The Russian Federation has violated a fundamental principle of the law of the sea, the immunity of worship. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea guarantees this immunity. It means that Ukrainian naval vessels, the Nikopol, the Berdyansk, and the Yanikapu, are an expression of our sovereignty, and they must be respected as such. But Russia does not respect international. warships, a well-established principle of international law. We are here to defend not just Ukraine, but the rule-based international law order on the seas. Ukraine also has another reason for this case. We pursue this case for 24 of our great servicemen who suffered because of Russia's disrespect for international law. For nine and a half months, Russia took away their liberty and kept them from their families. Russia treated them as criminals. Russia detained them in poor conditions in the notoriously Fortova prison, and Russia forced them to sit in cages in the courts. My entire country and the whole world watched this with horror brave Ukrainian man. As you listen to legal arguments this week, I ask the tribunal to keep in mind the names of my countrymen are the ones who Russia illegally arrested, detained, and prosecuted, and who deserve justice. Namely, Denis Hrtsenko, Roman Mokryak, Bogdan Nebelitsa, Oleg Milnychuk, Volodymyr Lisovy, Sergei Popov, Andriy Drach, Vasil Soroka, Andriy Artemenko, Viktor Bespalchenko, Yuri Bezyazichny, Andriy Oprysko, Volodymyr Tereshenko, Mikhailo Vlasyuk, Volodymyr Varemes, Vyacheslav Zinchenko, Andriy Eider, Bogdan Golovash, Yevgeny Semedotsky, Sergei Tsibizov, Yuri Budzilov, Andriy Shevchenko, Vladislav Kastyshin, Sergei Chuliba. Russia does not uh, want this tribunal to hear Ukraine's case. It seeks to avoid dispute settlement under UNCLOS, even ro though Russia consented to it. Russia believes it can violate international law without consequences. Russia is mistaken. Many of its arguments have already been rejected by the International Tribunal for the Law of the Seas. The ITLAS issued an order requiring Russia to immediately release Ukrainian warships and servicemen. It was a common sense order adopted by 19 votes to one. The ITLAS found prima facie uh, jurisdiction to issue that order. This week, all Ukraine is asked for the tribunal is to follow a similar path and recognize its jurisdiction over this dispute. We believe the record before you establishes your jurisdiction beyond doubt. Ukraine will demonstrate that Russia's attempt to escape accountability must be rejected. These attempts are not based on sound principles of international law. In fact, they are inconsistent. 
when it suits Russia to call something a law enforcement activity. It does so. But when they believe it helps them, they say instead it's a military activity. When Russia first arrested our vessels, it invoked UNCLOS as justification. But now Russia insists that UNCLOS does not govern their actions. The only point on which Russia is consistent that it should not be accountable for its actions. Russia also has trouble with facts. Throughout yesterday presentations, you were told that there is no real dispute about the facts. So I was very surprised to hear a number of statements that are not based on reality. I know the record of this case and the testimony of our servicemen. They tell a very different story. You were also presented yesterday with a false picture of what the dispute is about and an incorrect approach to UNCLOS. Today, we will show you what the dispute actually concerns. I should pause here to acknowledge what the whole world knows. The disputes between Ukraine and Russia are complex and multifaceted, many of them serious in nature. Ukraine is witnessing blatant violations of international law by Russia on a daily basis. But even for us, Russia's arrest of our warships was a shocking event. And while our disputes are many, we are before you to solve a narrow issue under UNCLOS regarding Russia's affront to Ukraine's sovereignty when it arrested and detained our warships and men. The tribunal has jurisdiction to hear this dispute. Today, we will show you why every of one of Russia's objections should be rejected. First, you will hear from Ms. Marnichik. She will demonstrate that this dispute does not concern military activities, and therefore, this case is not subject to the exception from the jurisdiction under Article 298-1B of the Convention. Ukraine claims that Russia has violated the immunity of its naval vessels. When Russia arrested those vessels and their crew in order to prosecute them for supposedly violated Russian law, that immunity was violated. Russia continued to assert criminal jurisdiction by prosecuting Ukraine's servicemen. It detained our warships on the basis that they were evidence in criminal case. Such actions are gross violation of the law of the sea. Ukraine brings a claim that concerns an unlawful attempt to invoke criminal jurisdictions against vessels that are immune from such jurisdiction. This is not a dispute that falls within the Convention's military activities exception. Following Ms. Chick, Professor Alfred Sons will demonstrate that Ukraine's claims of immunity violation fall within the UNCLOS. Specifically, he will explain that since the immunity violations committed by Russia occurred in the exclusive economic zone in the Black Sea, they are governed by Articles 95 and 96 of the Convention. Russia wishes to dispute the precise location of its unlawful arrests of Ukrainian vessels and servicemen, but this is improper at this stage of proceeding. The proper legal analysis is to accept the facts as pled by Ukraine in assessing Russia's objection. In addition to its improper factual argument, Russia makes an untenable legal argument. Russia claims that it was engaged in hot pursuit of warships and that Russia has the right to chase our ship from the territorial sea into the exclusive economic zone to arrest them. That is not what UNCLOS says about warship immunity. Russia is wrong at every step. The idea of hot pursuit against the warship makes just no sense. Russia's argument is also wrong because it would deny the immunity to warships in the territorial sea. Although this question is not properly before the tribunal at this stage, Professor Sons will show that Article 32 of the Convention provides for such immunity in the Torial Sea. After Professor Sons speaks, Professor Jean-Marc Tuvenan will demonstrate that the tribunal also has jurisdiction over the dispute between the parties concerning Russia violation of the provisional measures order and its aggravation of the dispute. First, he will address Russia's failure to promptly comply with the provisional measures under the order issued by the International Tribunal of the Law of the Sea. The, uh, the order of the ITLAS in May 2019 was binding and clear. Russia was required to immediately release Ukraine's West naval vessels and servicemen. But Russia continued detaining them for months after that order. 
This was a serious breach of Article 290 of the Convention, which is imposed a legal obligation to comply promptly with the Provisional Measures Order. The Tribunal has jurisdiction over this serious violation of UNCLOS. Professor Tuvanan will also explain how Russia has violated Article 279 of the Convention by aggravating the dispute between the parties. Finally, Mr. David Zayans will demonstrate that Ukraine satisfied its obligation to proceed to an exchange of views about the resolution of this dispute. As required by Article 283 of the Convention, Ukraine asked Russia Federation to exchange views on resolving this dispute, but Russia delayed and would not proceed quickly to an exchange of view. Meanwhile, our servicemen remained in detention and faced a new violation of their immunity in Russia's courts. Ukraine was fully justified in commencing arbitration and bringing its application for provisional measures. Mr. President, members of the tribunal, you will see that Ukraine's grounds for invoking the tribunal's jurisdiction are well supported by the facts and by international law. Russia's objections are not. Russia committed serious violations of the international law by violating the immunity of Ukraine's warship. The tribunal has jurisdiction under UNCLOS to provide a remedy for this serious violation and to hold Russia to account. The Birdyansk, the Nikopol, and the Yanikapo and 24 servicemen on board were illegally arrested almost three years ago. Ukraine asked the tribunal to promptly move to the merits of the case. On behalf of I thank you for your attention to this important case. We seek your relief so that Ukraine can finally obtain justice, accountability, and compensation for our brave servicemen and defend the well-recognized principle of absolute immunity of naval vessels. Mr. President, thank you, and I now request that you invite Ms. Marnie Chick to the podium. I thank Ms. Zolotaryova. The live transmission of today's hearing uh, now concludes. And I don't know if there was a photographer present, but we will ask the photographer to 